Hello everyone, this is Brain Resource Creation Workshop, Chapter 1, Brain Basics. So first off, we need to know what exactly is the brain? Well, it is the command center of our body, specifically our nervous system. It contains billions of neurons, which transmits info from the body and the outside world. It programs responses such as unconscious and conscious moments, thoughts, emotions, memories, and play a role in formal regulation. The brain is split into two regions that have specialized cells for specific tasks and abilities. Now, that was a general splurge of the brain, but let's dig a little deeper with major brain landmarks. So, starting off with the cerebrum, the largest part of the brain, which is divided into two separate hemispheres, the left and the right. The left and the right hemisphere is connected by the corpus callosum, which is a large bundle of the nerve fibers that ensures both sides of the brain can communicate with each other. The surface of the cerebrum is thin, but deeply folded layer of nerve tissues called the cerebral cortex. The cortex is divided into the four lobes of the brain. What are the four lobes of the brain? There are the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, and temporal lobe. Our frontal lobe, by the name, is located in the front of our brain, above our eyes. It controls our voluntary movements, speech, memory, and emotion. It also is responsible for our higher cognitive skills, such as planning, impulse control, and problem solving. It is the last part of brain to mature. The parietal lobe is located on the top of our brain and is behind the frontal lobe. It helps integrate sensory signals from the skin, including touch, temperature, pressure, and pain. It also helps process taste and some visual information. The occipital lobe helps us process visual information and is responsible for recognizing colors and shapes, while the temporal lobe, which lies on the side of our brain below the eye level, helps interpret auditory information, recognize language, and form memories. Let's talk about the other brain landmarks. We have the limbic system, which regulates emotion and motivation. It includes the hippocampus and the amygdala. The hippocampus creates new memories and the amygdala integrates memories and emotions. Next, the thalamus is responsible for integrating sensory information and relaying it to other parts of the brain. The hypothalamus sends hormonal signals to the rest of the body through the pituitary gland. The midbrain, which is beneath the thalamus, contains neurons that coordinate eye movements and trigger reflexes to sounds. The basal ganglia helps regulate complex body movements. The hindbrain has roles in glucose regulation and sleep. It also includes regions that help control movement. The cerebellum is the second largest part of the brain. It contains over half of the brain's neurons. The bonds help influence breathing and posture. The medulla oblongata is the bottom most part of the brain. It connects the brainstem, the spinal cord, and contains neural networks that help basic functions such as breathing and heart rate. We have mentioned a lot about neural networks throughout these slides, and neural networks are a group of nerve tracts connecting a series of regions in the brain. Major nerve tracts include the corpus callosum, which are like thick bundles of neurons connecting your left and right hemispheres and the smaller anterior commissure, which com transmits signals between the left and right temporal lobes. Moving away from large structures and tissues of the brain, let's talk about the specific cells that make up the brain. Neurons are the fundamental units of the brain. They're made of three basic parts, dendrites, the cell body, and the axon. Other than neurons, there are glial cells that help support the neuron. These cells are extremely important. There are four main types of glial cells, astrocytes, microglia, ependymal, and oligodendrocytes. Astrocytes help regulate ion concentrations and provide nutrients for neurons. Microglia, tiny cells, act as immune cells of the brain, helping protect the brain from damage. The epidymal makes several spinal fluid that helps cushion the brain inside the skull. The oligodendrocytes sites help improve neural function by wrapping axons in myelin. Next are the ion channels and action potentials. These are what generates the electro signals in the brain. We all know that ions are electrically charged atoms. Ion channels are tunnel-like proteins. Ions can only cross a neuron cell membrane through these ions. When the channels are depolarized, there is less negative membrane potential. 
When the channels are hyperpolarized, there's more negative membrane potential. This voltage difference is the basis of generating an electrical signal. Action potentials are electrical impulses which move down the axon towards the next neuron. Next, we'll talk about synapses and neurotransmissions. Neurons pass information to each other in the process of neurotransmission. Synapses are junctions between neurons. Neurotransmitters are chemical signals that are passed and they cross through the synapse. Once a neurotransmitter is detached from its receptor, there's a process called reuptake, which is absorption of neurotransmitters by the axon terminal. There are two types of neurotransmitters, excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmitters. Excitatory neurotransmitters like glutamate excites neurons to fire. Inhibitory transmitters like GABA prevent neurons from firing. Finally, we'll talk about receptors and molecular signaling in the brain. Neurons have receptors where molecules can bind. These molecules include hormones, which send specific cues about the activity of distant tissues in the body, neuromodulators, substances that indirectly excites or inhibits neuron firing and prostaglandins, small lipids that change the brain's response to pain and inflammation. This concludes Chapter 1 of the Brain Resource Creation Workshop on Brain Basics. This workshop was brought to you by the Brain Resource Creation Department of Simply Neuroscience. We hope you enjoyed the workshop. Lastly, if you have any questions, you can email us at the emails on the slide. Stay tuned for more videos from us. Have a great day from the people at Simply Neuroscience.